welcome to New Light. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Remember to follow us on all social media platforms so that you can participate in our weekly virtual activities for youth and adults. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to help us reach the world. Enjoy service and have an amazing week. Good morning. We're going to prepare to receive our offering. As we do, I wanted to take a moment to speak to you from the Word of God. In John chapter 3, verse 16, somewhat familiar passage of scripture, it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would also have everlasting life. This morning, I want to take a moment to talk to you about the fact that though that is a very familiar passage of scripture, reading it over and over brings a different level of insight. One of the things that we come to understand is that God loved us immensely, but he loved us so much that his love moved him to give. His love caused him to give, but not only did he give, he gave his best. All right. Can I point this out to you? That God loved us so much that he gave and he gave his best. Ephesians chapter five, verse one, Paul writes this to the church. He says, be ye therefore imitators of God as beloved children. This morning, you and I are going to have the opportunity to imitate our God. God loved so much that he gave and he gave his very best. This morning, I wanna challenge you to imitate your God. Give and give your very best. God bless you, we love you. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 For the word of our God declares, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, we're going to try it one more time. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. How good and how pleasant it is for us to have the opportunity to come together and spend time in worship. God has been good to us. God has been amazing to us, and we are grateful for who he is, grateful for all that he has done. Come on, can you help me worship our God this morning? We serve a great God. He is a great king above all gods. That's what the word of God declares in Psalm 95. And as a result, the psalmist goes further to say, so oh come, let us worship. Let's worship and bow down. Would you help me celebrate this morning? Our great God, can you help me celebrate?
yes. It's uncomfortable sometimes to tell him yes. But I guarantee you this morning by the Spirit of God that if you'll give him a yes from the pit of your belly, if you'll give him a yes from the depths of your soul, it'll be the greatest moment of your life. I'm telling you that you'll see God open doors on your behalf. You'll see God launch you and catapult you into places that you never thought you'd be able to go. But it requires a submission to him. It requires a yes to him. It requires a bowing to his will. Come on, one more time. Out of the pit of your belly, when you lift it up with me, lift it up, lift it up, say, Got us! 
knees. Come on, push your way into the presence of God. Come on, let the devil know he ain't stole nothing from you. Come on, let the devil know you still got a father. You still got a man. You still got a scream. You still got a run. You will not be freezing. It's
corporate worship service. This is the moment where I would celebrate the gifts of God that were able to stand in my stand on last week. So would you do me a favor? Let's celebrate Minister Kimmela Brady who led us in worship. She did an outstanding job. We thank God for the gift that rests on her life. We celebrate what God is doing in her. And we thank God for the anointing that rests on her life. And then would you also join me in thanking God for the gift that is Evangelist Sylvia Mavens, who stood on last week and gave us the word of the Lord. It told us that we had to prepare to pursue. There's some things we got to get ready. We had to get ready. We had to practice our pounce. Anybody remember the word from last week? Come on, we got to get ourselves ready for what God is getting ready to do. And so we thank God for the gift that is Evangelist Mavens and the word she deposited in our hearts. Can you thank God for her this morning? We honor God. We honor God. To all of you who prayed for Pastor Jay and myself, we say thank you. We say thank you. God blessed us with a wonderful time and we are able to come back refreshed and ready to go to continue our service to our God. So we thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your concerns. For those of you who reached out to us, we say thank you so much. Know that we love you and we appreciate you. Would you do this with me this morning? Let's go into the word of God. Let's go into the word of God. I am excited about what God has deposited in my heart to give to you. All right, I want to just share this with you right off the bat today. That here's, here's what we're going to do. We are beginning a series on Sunday mornings. I know that this, this is a little different for me, uh, but I believe that I've heard the Spirit of God. And so we are getting ready to begin a series on Sunday mornings. I'm going to talk to you about strategy. All right, strategy. That is a word that God has released into my heart and into my spirit as I've spent time with him trying to hear him uh, over these last several days and so I want you to know that for the next couple of weeks we're going to be talking about strategy we are going to talk about the plan of God watch this but we're going to talk about the God of more than one way can you say that with me the God of more than one way that's what we're going to be spending our time with over the next three weeks or so. We're going to be focused on the God of more than one way. Strategy, all right? Strategy, the God of more than one way. So, so this, is, this is what I want you to do with me this morning as we prepare to go into the Word of God. Would you pray with me? Would you pray with me? Father, we come before you now. We thank you and praise you for who you are. We thank you and we praise you for your power. We thank you and praise you for your splendor. We pray now as we prepare to go into the word of God, give us wisdom, give us insight, give us revelation of what it is you want to say to us. Our hearts are ready. Our minds are ready to receive. So, Father, even now, make deposit into us. Pour into us that which you desire us to know. Because you are a God of strategy. You are a God of more than one way. So, Father, we thank you for it. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. your attention I want to turn your attention to first chronicles first chronicles chapter 14 and when you get there if you would look at verses 8 through 11 verses 8 through 11 and I'm going to share them with you this morning out of the King James Version. He reads, And when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek David, and David heard of it and went out against them. 
And the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of God saying, shall I go up against the Philistines? And wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto him, go up, for I will deliver them into thine hand. So they came up to Baal Perazim, and David smote them there. Then David said, God hath broken in upon mine enemies by my hand like the breaking forth of waters. Therefore, they call the name of that place Baal Perazim. For just a few moments of time, based around this idea of strategy, God having more than one way. I want to talk to us this morning about the God who breaks through. All right? I want to talk to you about the God who breaks through. All right? Watch this. The Bible in this text helps us to understand that David, who is a young man when we first hear of him, he's a young man who receives an anointing for a season he's not yet, not yet ready to walk into. It's interesting because when we first hear of David, David is a young shepherd boy who has an anointing and a gifting, a calling and an assignment that is greater than he's even ready to walk in. However, we find that when we pick him up in this text, David has grown, he has matured, and he has now been crowned king of all Israel. He is no longer just the king of Judah. He is now king of all Israel. There has been a unifying of the country. There has been a unifying of the nation. There has been a unifying of the kingdom. Watch this. And David has been named king of over all Israel. Watch this. The Bible says that, 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 that when you study this out, the people of Israel are in celebration mode. They are excited because they have God's king, but then they have also been unified. Years of division, years of separation, years of schism, years of problem, years of challenge have been mended by the power of God. Watch this. And David is now seated on the throne of a unified Israel. Watch this. David is now sitting on the throne of a unified nation and, and the nation is excited. The nation is happy. The nation is ready to celebrate, but not everybody is happy about the unification of Israel. There are some folk that we have heard of before. Watch this. Who have a problem with the fact that Israel has become one. Watch this. I, I, I want to talk to somebody because there are seasons in our lives that we are getting ready to encounter where God is getting ready to unify some things that have been broken for a long time. I, I'm telling you that I wish I could. I wish I could give this to you uh, the way God really poured it into my heart. But, but I'm going to do the best I can to help you understand that you and I have entered into a season, a dimension in the spirit of God where God is now getting ready to bring some things back together that have been divided for a period of time. A season where it looked like it was impossible for it to come together, for anything to change. But God is now unifying at another level. Watch this. It will be supernatural. It will be the hand of God and we will have no choice but to celebrate what he has done. Watch this. Who am I preaching to? I'm talking about somebody who thinks that your family is broken forever. I came to tell you God is getting ready to put some things back together. Those of you who are on the outside looking around and you think that your life is going to always look like it looks now because it's looked this way for so long. I want to tell you God is getting ready to put it back together. I want you to understand that there are those of you who are watching me right now and your financial situation has been rough for a long time. That's all you've ever known is struggle but 
but I came to tell you that God is getting ready to put some things back together and there will be those that will hear of it and celebrate. There will be those who will hear of it and rejoice with you. There will be those who will hear of it and they will dance beside you, but there will also be those who will hear of it and they are not going to be happy about it. Watch this. Here's, here's what's interesting. The Bible says, the Bible says that, that when David is crowned king over all Israel. The nation is in celebration, but the Philistines are upset about it. The Bible says, and the Philistines launch an, an attack. They come up with a plan. They come up with a strategy of their own. Watch this. And they have decided that they are going to oppose David's throne. They are going to oppose the seating of him as the king of Israel. And watch this, y'all. I want to show you some things because God gave me revelation and, and it blessed my life. Watch this. When they heard about it, they decided to come up to attack David. Can I share this with you? Watch this. They had to come up to attack him. You missed your shout cue right there. Watch this. David was not on their level. David had been elevated. David was seated above them. David was higher than them. Watch this. The level of warfare that they were going to engage in, they had to come up to David's level to even attack him. Can I share something with you? Because many times we act like us and the devil are on the same level. We act like us and the enemy are operating on the same plane. But I need you to understand that even for him to attack you he's got to come up before he can touch you watch this because the word of God says that you are seated above principalities you are seated above powers watch this God watch this you gotta understand that the enemy has to come up to even approach you watch this he's gotta come up to even be able to attack you Watch this. So, so let's, let's walk this thing out. The Bible says that they, watch this, they make up a plan and they say, watch this. So they say, all right, the, is the Philistines went up to look for David and David heard about it. And, and here's what I love. In, in, in Chronicles it's written and it says, and David went out against them. But watch this, in 2 Samuel, where this same story is told, it says when David heard about it, David went down into the hold. Watch this, he, 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 he heard about the attack and he went down. Watch this, watch this, they came up to attack him, but when he heard about the attack, he went down down. Watch this. Watch this. I, I need you to understand that there are seasons in our lives where God has set us in elevated places. God has set us above what is going on. But watch this. Sometimes we'll hear some stuff and it'll bring us down. Watch this. We'll hear some things and it'll bring us to a low place. We'll hear some stuff and it'll try to bring your spirit down. You'll hear some things and it'll try to discourage you. You'll hear some stuff and it'll make you want to go high. Watch this. That, that's what happened because when you study this out and understand it, according to 2 Samuel chapter 5, when David heard about it, 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 24, if anybody wants to go do the research behind me, watch this. 2 Samuel 5 24 says when David heard about this, when David heard about this, that David came down and he went into the hold. He went into the hold, H-O-L-D. Watch this, but when you study it out, you really find out that he went into a hole, H-O-L-E. Watch this, he went into a hold that was in the ground. He went to a place, watch this, he went into a cave. He went into a low place. He, he descended the heights and he went into a low place. Watch this, he went somewhere Watch this. He allowed his emotions. He allowed fear. He allowed what he was feeling to bring him from the high place. And it took him to a low place. Anybody know what it's like to be good one moment? And then you get some news that makes you want to go into a hole. Watch this. And here's what's interesting when you study it out. This, this also is, is kind of alluding to the time that David spent in the cave of Adullam where he got down and he was a little disgusted and, 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 and folk came and attached themselves to him. But that's a lesson for another day. Watch this. The Bible says, the Bible says that, that David goes into this hold. But while he is there, while, while he is there, David kind of grabs himself. 
he grabs himself, he shakes himself, and he realizes that he needs a strategy. Yeah, he, he recognizes that he needs a plan. He recognizes that he needs something greater than his own insight. Because watch this, his insight took him into a hole. What he perceived brought him down. What he saw made him depressed. What he heard shifted his mood. Watch this. And so David, while he's down there, the Bible says that David begins to pray. Watch this. But, but I want y'all to see that David asks for a strategy. But can I show you that the enemy had one as well? The enemy's strategy, watch this, if you look at this text, the Bible says that the Philistines came and they spread themselves out in the valley of Rephaim. All right, watch this. The valley of Rephaim, the valley of Rephaim, the valley of Rephaim. It just, it sounds like just another place, doesn't it? It sounds like just another valley. It just sounds like just another depression, just another hole, just another, watch this. But, but can I tell you what, why this was such a strategic, uh, 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 just such a strategic tactic of the enemy because in order to really understand how crafty the enemy is, you got to understand what Rephaim is. Watch this. The valley of Rephaim, watch this, is the valley of giants. Watch this. See, see that's, what it, that's what it means. Watch this. The enemy decided that he was going to go, go set himself up in the valley of a previous encounter. Ain't nobody going to talk to me this morning. Watch this. One of the greatest strategies of the enemy is to try to trap you in the place of where you were. Watch this. See, see David has already fought a giant before. David defeated a giant before. Watch this. But in this valley, watch this, in the valley of giants, it was named that place because at one point the, 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 the giants used to dwell there. It was territory that they occupied. But watch this, when they died because they were also a fighting and valiant people, there were still bones of giants left laying in the valley. Watch this. So they positioned themselves in a place where David would look at skeletons that were familiar. Ain't, ain't nobody going to talk to me because you know what it is to periodically have to look at a skeleton that you left laying somewhere. Watch this. See, see, you, you know what it is to have some things that you have addressed in the past but you but you are you you still are afraid periodically to even look back over there in case it might still have a little grip on you. You, you ain't nobody going to be real with me this morning but but you know what I'm talking about there's some things that you used to fight with some stuff you used to struggle with some habits that you used to have and you, though you have conquered them in this season every now and then the enemy still taunts you with you know you used to you know that you are still uh, that you still have a proclivity towards you know you got to be careful because if you go over there and you hang around it too long if you look at it too hard you're going to find that you still want it watch this so, so the enemy's strategy, the enemy's plan was to put David in a place where he would have to look at his past. Watch this. And it was possible that David's past could bring up fear. And if David was afraid, then it would give the enemy the foothold that he needed to defeat him because watch this when when we are afraid we are not rational when we 
are operating in fear, we're not thinking clearly. And the goal of the enemy many times is to get us in a place of fear so that we become irrational, so that we are not able to think straight, so that we are not able to watch this follow a plan, so that we are not able to execute a strategy. Watch this, but I want you to understand that even when the enemy tries to raise your past, I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but I'm telling you by the Spirit of God that I feel the Holy Ghost pushing me, but I need you to know that even when the enemy tries to bring up your past when he begins to speak to you and try to show you glimpses of where you came from glimpses of what you came out of glimpses of what you left behind glimpses of some things that may feel like they were unresolved I came to tell somebody leave it laying right there don't go back and try to resolve it don't go back and try to fix it don't worry about what the devil is trying to show you you need to watch this Find out what God's plan is. This, this, this got me, this got me. Because David, watch this, as, as the Philistines have laid and stretched themselves out all the way across the valley, they are spread out all the way across so that no matter where David looks, he's going to see a Philistine. He's going to see a Philistine. A Philistine, he's going to see one everywhere he looks. Watch this, everywhere. No matter as far as his eye will go, he's going to see a Philistine, but he's going to see a Philistine standing among the remnants of something he fought before. Watch this. And the Bible says that David, David knows where they are. And then David begins to pray. Watch this. David prays and he says, Father, he says, is it your will for me to go up against the Philistines? He says, he, says, he says, God, do you want me to go up against them? He says, he says but, but here's my question to you now. God, if I go, will you deliver them into my hand? He says, God, is it your will for me to fight? And if it's your will for me to fight, will you give me victory? Watch this. I, I, I want to talk to somebody this morning who is in a place where you've got to fight a familiar enemy. I'm telling you, I hear the Holy Ghost this morning. Watch this. You got to fight something that you have fought before. And, and David, watch this. When David beat Goliath years ago and he thought this thing was over, he thought it was done. And here the Philistines are coming again. And David says, this time, God, if I go fight them, if I go up against them this time, will you give me victory? And God tells him, yes, go up against them. Watch this. God says, yes, go up against them. Watch this. You, you've got to understand. You've got to understand that this is God's strategy. He is releasing to David, but you've got to dig into the text to catch it. David's prayer is, Father, do you want me to attack them head on? See, 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 when you dig this out and understand, David is praying about strategy. What is strategy? Strategy is a plan of action. David says, God is the plan of action in this moment for me to confront it head on. Watch this. And God says, yep, I want you to go confront it head on. Church just got quiet. I'm telling you, watch this. He, 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 here's the reality. There are many of us who are comfortable with, with, with the idea of hinting at some things. We, we talk in riddles and we talk uh, round about. But in this season, watch this. The strategy of God is not for you to drop hints. The strategy of God is not for you to, to, to beat around the bush. Watch this. The strategy of God in this season for your life, watch this, is that you will confront some things head on. What are you talking about, Bishop? Instead of standing around talking about, well, I kind of think. No, no, no. You need to go ahead and say head on. No, no. This is not the plan. This is not the strategy. This is not the way. Watch this. But you say, well, Bishop, I'm going to hurt some folks' feelings. 
feelings that's okay in this season their feelings might be hurt but their lives will be preserved I need you to hear me one more time their feelings might be hurt but their lives will be preserved the Bible says, the Bible says that David prays and he says, God, is it your strategy? Is this the plan for us? You want me to go head on against the enemy. You want me to go head first. You want me to let him see me coming. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. David said, David said, God, you sure you don't want this to be a covert attack? You sure that you don't want me to come up from the side? You sure you don't want me to kind of side swipe him? You sure? God, God said, no, I want you to run head first. I want him to see you coming and I want him to know, watch this, that you're not afraid. I want him to know that you ain't I ain't scared. I want him to know that you aren't backing down. I want him to know that you got a God on your side. How, how are you able to confront this the way you are? It's because I got a God on my side. Why are you able to say what you're saying? It's because I got a God on my side. Why is it that you're not backing down and running away? Because I got a God on my side. Is there anybody here? Say, I got a God. I got a God on my side. Watch this. And God says, God says to David, David says, Lord, is it your will that I would go up against him, that I'll, that I'll go head on? And God says, yes, sir. And watch this. What God says to David, watch this. And I need y'all to get this. I need you to get it. I need you to get it in your spirit. Watch this. What God says to David is, David, if you will confront it, I'll give you victory over it. Church got quiet on me one more time. Lean on somebody and tell them, if you will confront it, God said, I'll give you the victory over it. If you will come hand to up with it, if you'll stand toe to toe with it, if you'll call it what it is, God said, but I, I'll make sure I give you the victory over it. If there anybody that will declare I need that kind of victory, in this season, I will not tuck my tail. I will not back down. I will not run the other way. I will not act like I didn't see it. But in this season, I will confront the enemy everywhere he's bold enough to show up. I'm going to be bold enough to call him out. Everywhere he's brave enough to show his hand. I'll be brave enough to call him out. Shall he you asked watch this what the Lord began to tell me is in this season he is raising up a people who will be bold enough to run up on the devil what are you talking about so glad you asked God said in this season I'm raising up people who will not cower who will not back down who will not turn their heads who will not run the other way but if a demon shows up I ain't got to run I'll stand toe to toe and say in the name of Jesus and take authority everywhere that sickness tries to show up I'll stand up and declare but he was wounded for my transgressions and he was free So it's head. I'll stand and declare, but my God, supply all of my need according to His riches and glory. Everywhere it shows up, I will confront it. Everywhere the devil rises, I will confront it. Everywhere the devil tries to overthrow me. some stuff in this season you got to be ready to go toe to toe you got to be ready to run head on you got to be ready to charge the enemy come on the bible says david prays and 
says, Lord, is it your will that I go up against them? And then he says, if I go, will you deliver them into my hand? He says, if I fight it, will you let me defeat it? If I confront it, will you let me prevail? I came to preach to somebody and tell them that if you're bold enough to go ahead and confront it, for something you know in this season and hour that we are living in some of us have not yet gone to restaurants and some of us are undecided about how comfortable we are with being out in the public every now and then you call DoorDash every now and then you call Grubhub they, they've made frequent stops to my house because I got a son that don't want to drive nowhere all the time and so he'll call and he'll place an order for some food watch this and so when when they come they deliver it to him watch this all he did was ask for it. They do the work. They prepare it. They drive it to him. They get out of the car. They ring the doorbell. My son comes to the door. He opens the door and they hand him what he asked for. Can I tell somebody in this room this morning that God said if you'll go for it, he said I will deliver them into your hands. Yeah! I feel the Holy Ghost because what the Lord said is if you're brave enough to place the order then I will I'll do the work I'll have it show up at your house you open the door, I'll put it right in your hand. Can you lean on some blood and some name? I saw the God who is delivering, is delivering victory. Shout in this room, what do you need? What do you need God to bring to your house? Shout, I need victory. I need healing delivered. I need victory delivered. Home is delivered. I need finances delivered. Shout it! Yeah. Whatever you need, God say, for I will deliver into your hand. I know we're not in the room, but will you hold your hand out as a sign of expectation? Will you hold your hand out as a sign of expectation? I'm waiting on God. Drop some stuff. Yeah! God is getting ready to drop some stuff. It's getting ready to fall in your hands. Who am I preaching to? Get ready in this season. Cause stuff is getting ready to fall in your hands. Get ready in this season. Miracles are getting ready to fall in your hands. Get ready in this season. The ways are getting ready to fall in your hands. Get ready. Jesus, 
Watch this. I'm going. Going to my seat, y'all. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Watch this. I'm trying. I'm trying. Watch this. Judy, if you're watching, I'm on my way to my seat. I promise. Watch this. The Bible says, so they came up. They came up to Baal Perazim. Watch this. The Philistine army has positioned themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David, watch this. David arrives at the place called Baal Perazim. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm telling y'all this blessed my life. David shows up at Baal Perazim. Watch this. David shows up at Baal Perazim. But they were waiting for him in the valley of Rephaim. David shows up at Belperazim. Mm -hmm. But they are waiting for him in the valley of Bel of Rephaim, the valley of Rephaim. Watch this. There, there is there is study that if you will do it, it's interesting because it identifies that the valley of Rephaim is also Bell Paris out. Church got quiet on me. Watch this. Let, let me help you. Let me help you. The Philistines called it the Valley of Rephaim. David called it Bell Paris out. The enemy wanted to identify it as the place of David's past. David said, no, I'm, I, I, I arrived at a place where the Lord's getting ready to show up. Watch this church. The church is quiet. But, but watch this. I need y'all. I need y'all to work with me. I need you to work with me. If, if you go and study, if you go and study, watch this. You'll find that Baal Perazim and the Valley of Rephaim are actually the same place. Watch this. It is identified by one set of people as the Valley of Rephaim. But it is identified as another place by a different sect of people. Watch this. Folk can look at the same place and see it different ways. When the Philistines saw it, they saw it as a place of hindrance. They saw it as a place where David would look at this and become paralyzed. He would be stuck in this place. But David looked at it and saw a place where God had an opportunity. Who am I preaching to today? I, I need to tell you that there's some stuff you are looking at and the enemy wants to see it. He wants you to see it as a place where you're going down. He wants you to see it as a place where you're getting ready to lose. He wants you to see it as a place where you're getting ready to lose everything you got. He wants you to see it as a place where you will never recover. But David looked at the same place and he said, no, what I see is an opportunity for the God who breaks through. Watch this. Watch this, y'all. Y'all, I need you to understand that David arrived at this point and he arrives at this place with a shifted perspective. Watch this. Because he has received a deposit of the strategy of God, God's strategy shifted his perspective. Y'all, y'all, I need y'all to get it. I need you to get it. What God downloaded into David's spirit shifted how David saw the attack. He called it Bel Perazim before the Lord did anything. Y'all, I, I need you now. I need you. Come on, come on, come help me. David called it Bel Perazim before the Lord did anything. Well, 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 where you get it from, Bishop? Okay, let's read the whole. Let's read that whole last verse, and I'm, and I'm gonna leave you alone. The Bible says, "So they came up to Baal Perazim, and David smote them there." Watch this. 
Then David said, God has broken in upon my enemies by my hand, like the breaking forth of waters. Watch this. Therefore, they call the place, the name of that place, Baal Perazim. Watch this, watch this. They arrived at a place where David had already renamed it. I want y'all to get this so badly. Watch this. David already based upon what God has put in his spirit sees this place not as the place where he's going to die but he sees it as a place where God is getting ready to break forth. God is getting ready to reveal his hand. God is getting ready to move by his spirit. God is getting ready to manifest power. God is getting ready to break forth. God is getting ready to break forth. I feel the Holy Ghost. Lean on the person closest to you and shout God is getting ready to break forth. Gonna die in this place. I'm not gonna lose in this place. I'm not going under in this place. This is the place where God is getting ready to break forth. I feel the Holy Ghost. Lean, lean on somebody else and tell them God is getting ready to break forth. 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 God. God is God is getting ready to break forth. David, watch this. David called it Belperazim when they showed up. So they came to Belperazim. Watch this. And the Bible says, and there David smote them. David defeated them based on his perception of the place. Watch this. It was not a place where he was going down. It was a place where he was getting ready to get victory. Because God had already told him. God has already spoken and said, if you confront it, I'm going to put him in your hands. If you go head on, I'm going to cause you to walk away victorious. So David, watch this, trusted the word of the Lord. And in his mind, the place was already Bel Perazim. Watch this. So he went and fought with the expectation that the Lord is going to show up. Who am I preaching to today? David went to the place with the expectation that God is going to break forth. David showed up for the job interview and said God is going to show up. David showed up at the bank and said God is going to show up. David went and walked through the house and said God is going to show up. David went to the car lot and stood there and said God is going to show up. Who am I preaching to in this room? I need you to get ready for God to show up. I need a shift in your mindset. I need a shift in your perspective. And say, it's not where I'm going down. This is not where I lose my house. This is not where they take my car. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the place where the Lord is going to break forth. I'm getting ready to see the hand of God. I'm getting ready to see the power of God. I'm getting ready to see the miracle working ability of God. Watch this. The Bible says, and David called the place Bel Perazim. There he smote them. Watch this. And now I'm on my way to my seat. Judy, telling you that's my last closing. Judy, the Bible says, and David says unto them, God has broken forth. God broke forth on my enemies. Watch this. God broke forth on my enemies. How did you get the victory? God gave me the victory. How did you overcome that? God let me overcome it. Watch this. But he did it by my own hand. Shout in this room. Because God is getting ready to anoint your hands. In this next season, in this hour, God is getting ready to cause you to defeat some stuff. And he's going to do it through your hand. God, what are you talking about? With your uneducated self. God is getting ready to cause you to win. With your unqualified self. God is getting ready to cause you to win. With your uncertified self. God is getting ready to cause you to win. Shout yeah! With your non-degreed self. God is getting ready to cause you to win. God is getting ready to work through your Here's what I fell in love with. The Bible says that God has broken in over on my enemies and he's done it by my own hand. He says that he's done it like the breaking forth of waters. Watch this. What does the breaking forth of waters mean? It means it happened unexpectedly. It happened all of a sudden. It happened real quick. Couldn't nobody explain it. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody shout, I'm getting ready to get a victory that can't nobody even explain. I'm getting ready to walk into something that can't nobody explain. It's getting ready to overtake me real quick. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody shout, I was broke yesterday. But I'm getting ready to wake up with some money and it's going to come to me. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't even know how I got it. But God is getting ready to move on my behalf. I went to bed sick and I woke up here.
healed. I went to bed, I couldn't walk, and now I'm running. Is there anybody here that says God is getting ready to give me a victory that I didn't even see coming? I didn't understand how he was going to do it. I didn't know how he was going to do it. But because he's a God of more than one way, I just said, God, break forth. You right there in your living room. Can you throw your hands up real quick and just shout, God, break forth. I don't know how you gonna do it, but break forth. I don't care how you do it, just break forth. I ain't got to understand it, just break forth. I'm not gonna limit you to my rationale, just break forth. Watch this, I'm done. I'm telling you, I'm done. Watch this, and the Bible says that after David makes that declaration and the people experienced the victory that God had already told David he was going to give, watch this. David's faith caused everybody to change the name of the place. Y'all, come on. See it in the text? The Bible says they came to Belperazim and there David smote them and he, he fought them. Watch this. And then he declared God has broken forth uh, on my enemies. He says and he broke forth like, like the breaking forth of water. And the Bible says and then David fights them, gains this victory. And then the Bible says and they call the name of that place Belperazim to this day. Watch this. David's ability, I need y'all to get this now, and I'm going to sit down. David's ability to confront caused everybody's perspective to shift. Watch this. If David had not been willing to charge head on, facing the Philistine army, Head on, confronting toe to toe based upon the word and the strategy that God had released to him. Watch this. Had David not done it, it would have always been a valley of giants. But because David was willing to confront it, everybody said, well, no, this ain't a place of death. This is not a place of painful memory of my past. This is a place where I saw the Lord move. Can I tell you that God is getting ready to move in such a way in your life that places that have been places of pain, places that you don't want to recall, places that you don't want to remember, God is getting ready to move in this moment, in this very season of your life. And he's getting ready to cause those to be places where the Lord moved. Where God kept you. Where God preserved you. And where God handed you a victory. I need you to understand today that you are in a place. Hear my heart this morning. You are in a place where the strategy of God being released to you in this hour is one of confrontation. You are going to have to call stuff what it is. You are going to have to say what it is. Confront it head on. Put my glasses on so I can see you good. Watch this. You are going to have to confront. You are going to have to run head first. Calling it what it is. Watch this. In this hour, if it hurts, say it hurt. If it upset you, say it upset me. I'm telling you. Because the ability to confront is what's going to give you victory. 
Suppression will not bring victory. I need you to hear that in the spirit. Suppressing it will not bring you victory. Suppression is bondage. Suppression holds you captive. Watch this. But when you confront it, it brings you liberty. It brings freedom. You are delivered from it. Call it what it is. Confront it hand on. And God is going to break forth on your behalf and hand you a victory. Right here this morning. Can you celebrate the God who breaks forth? The God who breaks forth. He moves in ways that I wasn't expecting, that I wasn't anticipating, but I'm going to let him be God. I'm going to let him be God. I'm going to let him be God. Can I encourage you this morning? As we are all believing God together that he is going to break forth on our behalf. We are all believing that as we employ this strategy of confrontation that God is going to cause us to see victory. So there are some of you who are watching me this morning and I want to challenge you. Let's confront some things this morning. The first thing we want to confront is our need for Christ. Let's confront the fact that I'm a mess. Though I try to walk around and pretend for everybody else that I've got it all together, that, I, that I've got all the answers, that I know what I'm doing, the truth of the matter, I'm going to call it what it is this morning. The truth is I am messed up. And I need help. I need help. I want to present to you this morning. I want to present Jesus to you. I want to present him as your help. Though you are messed up, all of us have been messed up. And it took Jesus to help us. So we don't look down on you. We don't condemn you. We don't judge you. We celebrate your boldness to confront your need for him. So this morning, would you pray this simple prayer with me? Just say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm messed up. I need you. Lord, today, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Watch this. As simple as that may have sounded, if you believe in your heart, the Bible says, then you are saved. If you believe that Jesus came, that he died for you, that simple prayer, then you're saved. Would you do me a favor this morning? Would you text believer? to 31996 just text believer it'll let us know that you made the decision to accept Christ today and there's information we just want to share with you as you are a new believer as you are a new part of the family of God we want to share some information with you that will aid you in walking with him in getting to know him in shoring up your walk with him. You may be hanging out with us this morning in the cyber sanctuary and say, you know what? 
I really believe that this place is where God wants to plant me. This place is where God wants to connect me. And you, you're looking at your screen and you're saying, wait a minute, they're located in Chesapeake, Virginia. Don't worry about that. This word found you this morning right where you are. It found you right where you are. So don't let distance be a factor. If you believe that this is the place where God wants to plant you, where he wants to attach you so that you can grow and become everything he wants you to be, then we want to welcome you to the family of God and to the New Lighthouse. Come on, would you do me a favor this morning? Would you text New Light, New Light, the name of our church, to 31996? We just want to welcome you to the family of God and to the part as a part of the new lighthouse amen you may be here this morning and you say you know what i want to sow i want to give to the work of ministry i want to give as a result of this word that was deposited i want to give so that i can see god continue to move and flow and work through this house if that's you this morning can i encourage you the word of God says, bring your tithe and your offerings into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house. And then God says, prove me now herewith and see won't I open the window of heaven and pour you out blessing that you don't even have room enough to receive. This morning, can I encourage you, bring your tithe, bring your offering, bring it and present it to Christ. And we believe along with you that God is going to move supernaturally on your behalf that God is going to show himself mighty. He's going to show himself strong. So we believe that with you this morning. Bring your tithe, bring your offering. We celebrate with you this morning that we serve a God of strategy. We serve a God of more than one way. And we serve a God who breaks through. So this morning on behalf of Pastor Jay, myself and our entire family, we just want to say we love you and that we are so excited about all that God is doing in your life. We look forward to sharing and worship with you again real soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you. We love you.